it's it is possible yes um what i was going to suggest though that we that we just look a bit further at the one about um christ jesus because at the end of the day if we if we don't fully understand that or have that um thought correct in us well then you know how can we exercise faith in christ jesus I, I I must insist I'm willing to look at one single topic, only one. I'm not willing to jump every 20 minutes to a new topic. So we, we agree one topic, choose the chapter what, in your, your book, topic? and what, we look what, at what that. Is, what What is your topic today? Well, if you want to look at Jesus, chapter 15, paragraph 1 says, who is Jesus? Let, let me just get my, my book here. I thought we looked at politics and warfare the other week. Dudley. Sorry, say again? Yes, I thought the other week we looked at politics and warfare. Um, when did we last speak? We last spoke on Thursday last. Right. Wasn't that on politics and warfare? No. Oh, sorry, I've got confused. No, what did we okay. talk about? Um, we talked about um, lesson 24, I think it was. Uh, no, it must have been. Was it lesson 27 on the ransom? 20, 20, it was, yes. It was, in, it was on it, lesson right. 27, yeah. So this is lesson 15, did you say, who is Jesus? If you want to do who is Jesus, that's lesson 15, oh, paragraph if you, 1. If you if want you, to go if you want to do 27, that. I find. I'm, I'm only willing to do one thing, and I don't really want to do the same topic each time we, 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 we speak. I'd rather do it once, and then it's finito benito. We don't look at it again. So I'm in lesson 15. If that's what you want to do, who is Jesus is paragraph one. If you want to read that, we could look at that if that's if that's what you want to do. Had you anything else different in mind? Well, I was thinking of paragraph three, that Jesus, it says Jesus was resurrected as a spirit, but I'm happy to do paragraph one. Yeah. Uh, where it says that Jesus is a powerful spirit who lives in heaven. Yeah. He was created by Jehovah God before everything else, and for that reason he's called the firstborn of all creation, which is Colossians 1.15. The Bible refers to Jesus as God's only begotten Son because Jesus alone was directly created by Jehovah. Jesus worked closely with his Father, Jehovah helping him to create all other things. Jesus continues to enjoy a close relationship with Jehovah. He loyally serves as God's spokesman, the word, delivering his messages and instructions. Right. Um, whilst I believe that Jesus' humanity was created 2,000 years ago, I believe that Jesus shares his Father's deity. His Father is Spirit, John 4.24. So Father, Son and Holy Spirit would be the same one single Spirit. Therefore, I do not believe that Jesus is created. I do not believe there was a time when Jesus came into existence. I believe Jesus has eternally existed in the same nature as his Father, which is eternal divine spirit. Well, that's a direct opposite to what the Bible teaches, though. Well, you'd have to show me from, 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 from the Bible... Um, You know, I could to... say the same thing. I could say the position that you've just read in this chapter yeah. is, the, is the direct opposite of what the Bible says because it's taking those um, four verses completely out of context. Colossians 1.15, John 3.16, Proverbs 8.30, John 1.14. Do not say 
that the Son of God had a beginning. Certainly his humanity had a beginning 2,000 years ago, but Jesus has eternally existed without any beginning. He's eternally existed in the form, the morphe of God. Well, in Colossians 1.15, even in the King James Version Bible, it says that who, speaking about Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Okay, so what does that mean? That he was the firstborn of every creature. Yeah, and what does that mean? If, if, if you and I, um, Robert, are... In my, my firstborn was a daughter. Um, others have had firstborns as sons. Needless to say, it's going to be either male or female. So, But the firstborn is literally the one who came from ourselves. And so, likewise, there was a time whenever Jehovah was in existence on his own. I believe Jehovah is on his own. Jehovah is Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit eternally. And the Son never had a beginning. Um, firstborn is prototokos. It does not mean first created. That's how you're... You, you, you're, you're reading this passage and you think firstborn means he is the first created thing. First created is protokiskos. It's not used here. This is prototokos, firstborn, which means preeminent. It refers to rank, position, status. Um, it does not mean that Christ is the first created thing. That's a different Greek word, protokiskos, which is not used here, and it's never, u never used anywhere in the scripture of Jesus Christ. Besides which, if you think firstborn means first created, then your Bible says that Jesus is the first created of creation. In other words, it's the creation that birthed Jesus, according to your Bible. No, no. It says that he was the firstborn of all creation. In other words, he was created. He was the only uh, living creature who has been created by Jehovah. No, no, it doesn't. No, no. Your Bible doesn't Bible say Jehovah. Us, then, Robert, the Bible then tells us that all other things come into existence by means of him. No, it does not. It does not. You're misquoting Colossians 1.16. Your Bible says the firstborn of all creation. It doesn't say the firstborn of Jehovah. So if you misunderstand firstborn as meaning the first created thing, then it's the creation that made Jesus, not Jehovah. Well, even the King James Version Bible that I just read says he's the firstborn of every creature. No, it doesn't. Oh, it uh, does. I've got it in front of me. Hang on, let's have a look. Let me get the King James up. I think it says he's the firstborn uh, over all creation. I'm looking at the new King James, firstborn over all creation. Uh, Colossians 1.15 in the King James Version, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Yeah. Yeah. The firstborn means preeminent. So he's the pre preeminent one over every creature. It doesn't mean he is... If you think firstborn means first created, then well, your Bible is saying he's the firstborn... And he wasn't well, created put, by Jehovah, he's created by the creation. No, put, put the Bible aside just for a second. Um, and Webster's Dictionary defines the word creature as a living being, no, a no. created thing. It's not, one, it's not, it's not, it's not relevant. It's, it's not relevant. The Bible is written in Greek. This part of the Bible is written in Greek 2,000 years ago. You need to understand the words as to when they were written 2,000 years ago, rather than go to a Webster's 21st century dictionary. Give, give, me, one, uh, give me one second here, Robert. Yes, I, have, sure. I was on with another, uh, another group. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you. I apologise. No, 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 you're okay.
That's grand. They they have just uh, they've just all gone, so I just closed it closed it down. Um, the word for firstborn is prototokos. I, I don't speak New Testament Greek, so my pronunciation is probably very poor. It means preeminent. It refers to rank or position or status. For instance, the firstborn son had a higher inheritance than the other sons. So in Genesis chapter 41, verse 51, we read that Manasseh is firstborn. But at Jeremiah 31, 9, we read that his twin brother Ephraim is firstborn. All right, so who was firstborn out of the twin sons? Genesis 41, 51 says Manasseh was the firstborn son. Jeremiah 31, 9 says his twin brother Ephraim was firstborn. So it means preeminent. Due to sin, Manasseh lost the right of primogenitor, the right of the firstborn son which went to his twin brother Ephraim. So it doesn't mean first created. It's referring to rank, position, status. Words have a range of meaning, and you have to understand Bible words in the context in which they were written 2,000 years ago. Even, even if you go to Webster's Dictionary, there are, there are words in the King James Bible which have radically different meaning to when the King James Bible was last revised in 1769. Um, yes, that is very true. Yeah. But we will never agree on that, Robert. Never agree on what? That Jesus was not created. But you need to prove that. I'm willing to listen. Give me evidence. Give me proof for that. The very fact that you, you mentioned about um, Jesus and um, the, the spirit of Jesus and Jehovah and the Holy Spirit all being united as it were and always in existence. Um, the Bible teaches that Jehovah is a separate spirit creature. He is the Almighty. Jesus is never referred to in the Bible as the Almighty. You need to prove that and I can prove that Jesus is called the Almighty God in the book of Revelation. Go ahead. OK, um, if we go to Revelation, I need to show you three passages, so please be patient with me. Revelation chapter one, verse 17. Uh, Revelation chapter one, verse 17 and 18. We read of the Son of Man, by the way, in verse 13. That's obviously Jesus. And in verse 17, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. So who is this first and the last? I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of death and Hades and death. So who is this one? He's the first and the last. But he's the one who lives. He was dead, but now he lives and he is alive forevermore. And he has the keys of Hades and death. Surely that's a reference to Jesus Christ. Isn't he the first and the last? Yeah, he was the, he was the, the first one uh, to be created by his heavenly father. And he was the last one ever to be resurrected directly by his heavenly father. Is Jesus the first and the last? Is that title of first and the last applicable to Jesus? Yes, it is. It right. says in, in verse 18 that he's a living one, and I became dead, but look, I'm living forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and the grave. Okay. If we, the second verse is Revelation 22. I'll read from verse 12. It's 12 and 13. Well, we could read down to verse 16, which says, I, Jesus, that shows that the context is Jesus. Revelation 22, verse 12, and behold... I am coming quickly. The one who's coming quickly is the Son. It's not the Father who's coming back to this earth. It's Jesus the Son. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Now listen to this. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who is the yeah. one who's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last? Surely that's Jesus, the one who's coming quickly back to this earth. Just reading a section here. Hold yep. on. Mm -hmm. 
the, the, the phrase, the beginning and the end, reads exactly the same here in Revelation 22, 13, as it does in Revelation 1, 1, 17. Ho protos, kai ho eschatos. It's exactly the same, reads exactly the same. So surely the first and the last is the Alpha and the Omega. That's the only point I'm trying to make. I understand. Bear with me. You're obviously reading something at great length, Dudley, is that right? Yes, I am. It's a long time since I looked at this aspect of the Alpha and the Omega, and I'm just re uh, recalling. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you want to that. speak some other time, then? You do your research before you talk to me, and and because there, there's, the you know, uh, there's there's no point you, you, we, you, you know, I've been waiting for three, four minutes. All I'm trying to ask you is the question, is the Alpha and the Omega... Of Revelation twenty two thirteen, the f the beginning and the ending. The Alpha and the Omega spoken of uh, in Revelation. Whenever you look at it in in the full context. Sorry, the, the first and the times. last. Sorry, uh, sorry, is sorry, is the Alpha and the Omega? I beg your pardon. The first and the last. Ho protos, the first. Kai ho eschatos, the last. The first and the last. That's all I'm asking. Is the Alpha and the Omega also the first and the last? Sorry to interrupt you. It's okay. Um, you see, in this chapter, there there are several ones who are speaking. It's not just one person who's been spoken of and spoken in in the context of this chapter. I'm asking you: Is the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last? Yes or no? In verse thirteen, it tells us clearly. It says that I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So is the Alpha and the Omega also the first and the last? He is the first and the last. Okay. If you then go to Revelation... That. Okay, that, that's fine. That answers my question. Revelation 1, 7 and 8, you'll find out that the Alpha and the Omega is the Almighty God. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. And they also who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I think that's a clear reference to the second coming of Jesus Christ, which hasn't happened yet. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So the one who's the Almighty is the one who's to come, and he is the Alpha and the Omega, he is the beginning and the end. But in Revelation 22:13. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, is also the first and the last. And at Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, you agree with me that the first and the last is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ must be the Almighty God. So the, each time that the Alpha and Omega is made reference to is in reference to the Almighty. Yes, oh, and God. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. Well, in, in, in verses 7 and 8, it tells you that it's Jehovah God who is the Alpha and the Omega. So which verse? You're referring to Revelation 1, 7 and 8? Yeah. Is the Alpha and the Omega also the Almighty God? No. Right. Could, you, also, could you read the verse? Also, he's not also the Almighty God. He is the Almighty God. Right. Agreed. Alpha and Omega, I will take that back, is the Almighty God. I'll read it. Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. So the Almighty God is the Alpha and the Omega. Agreed? Yeah. Uh, the beginning and the end is the Almighty God. Agreed? Sorry, just say that once more. The beginning and the end of Revelation 1.8 is the Almighty God. Yes, that's what it tells us, that he's the Alpha and the Omega, he's from the beginning and the end. Right. If we go to Revelation 22, 13, the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end is the first and the last. Agreed? 
That's what the verse says. Right. When we go to Revelation 1.17, the first and the last is Jesus Christ. I'll read Revelation 1.17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. The context is the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, from verse 13. But we'll find that proven in a moment. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. So the first and the last is the, is the Alpha and the Omega, is the beginning and the end, who is the Almighty God. Now he explains who he is in verse 18. I am he who lives and was dead. That can't be the Father. That can't be the Holy Spirit. That can't be an angel like Gabriel. This has to be Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ lived and was dead. And then we read, Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amar, Amen, and I have the keys of death and Hades. So the one who is the first and the last is Christ, who lives and was dead, and behold, he is alive forevermore. The first and the last, you said, was Jesus Christ, when I read Revelation 1.17. You then agreed that the first and the last is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end at Revelation 22, 13. And at Revelation 1, 7, you agreed that the Alpha and the Omega, who is also the beginning and the end, is the Almighty God. So Jesus Christ must be the Almighty God. No, I don't agree. Why? Please show me where, where the logic is wrong, because you agreed with every one of those steps. You said... At Revelation 1.17, you said that the first and the last was Jesus Christ. At Revelation 22.13, you said the first and the last is also the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end. You said that. And then when we went to Revelation 1.7, you agreed that the Alpha and the Omega, who is the beginning and the end, you said that is the Almighty God. The Alpha, uh, Revelation 1 and verse 8, which says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah God, the one who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. This is a reference to the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, being the Almighty God, yes? But uh, the Almighty God is not Christ Jesus. C excuse me, does the text, I don't care what you think, does the text say that the Alpha and the Omega, who is the beginning and the end, is the Almighty God? Yes or no? I don't believe that the, Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega is... Uh, yes, I believe that the Alpha and Omega is the Almighty God. Right. Thank you for answering the question. But Jesus it, has never been referred to. He himself never referred to himself as the Alpha and the Omega in the sense that he was the great, he was greater than his father. Excuse me. At Revelation 1.17, is Jesus Christ the first and the last? Uh, do you want to read Revelation 1.17 and 18 and tell me who the first and the last is? You can read it out aloud, please. Please don't read it quietly. I, I will. Read it I, I'm just reading on it. Um, the the fact that the Alpha and the Omega in verse uh, verse eight there. Is verse I'm not asking you. I'm asking you to read Revelation I, I one am, seventeen I'm and eighteen. Your question. I'm answering your question. In verse eight, it clearly states that the Alpha and the Omega is Almighty God. Right. I'm now asking you about Revelation 1, 17 and 18. Would you like to read it and tell me who the first and the last is? It says in connection with it uh, in that verse, also in verse 8. No, no. I'm asking about Revelation 17 and 18. Would you please read it and tell me who the first and the last is? Is the first and the last Jesus Christ, yes or no? Jesus is the first and the last. Okay, agreed. We're because both he was agreed. The first human. He was the first human. Oh, we're we're running out of time here. I forgot about that. We used to um, be able to uh, stay on indefinitely, and now it's forty minutes and it cl cuts off. Uh, if Jesus was the first, insofar as he was the first human, 
ever to be resurrected to spirit life. It, it, and he was it, the last one to be resurrected. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It does not mean that because in in Isaiah forty four six, Jehovah is the first and the last. You'll find, and the Jehovah didn't have a beginning. That's right. Yeah. But that expression can be can be can have different meanings. It doesn't just apply the one aspect of it. Um, let me let me read Isaiah forty four six, where it says, "Lord in capitals." I'll read Jehovah. Thus says Je Jehovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. So Jehovah is the first and Jehovah is the last. So we agree at Revelation 1-7 that the Alpha and the Omega is the Almighty God. We agree on that. And we agree that Jesus Christ is the first and the last at Revelation 1-17. Agreed? Go ahead. Do you agree? We agree that Jesus, or that Jehovah is, yes, the Almighty, that he is the Alpha and Omega, that he is the first and the last. Do we, Revelation one seventeen has Jesus, the one who lives and was dead and behold, he's alive forevermore. He's called the first and the last. Is Jesus the first and the last? He was, yes, but not in the same context as, as uh, referred to as the Heavenly Father. Oh, so there are different first and lasts. There's different there's different meanings to first and last. The expression might be the same. It doesn't necessarily have the same meaning. Right. So, what does it mean in Revelation one seventeen, where Jesus is called the first and the last? It says it. It he says that he was the first and last because he was the first one ever to be resurrected as a human to spirit life. But then you you were saying in an earlier discussion you didn't accept that. You accepted that Jesus went to heaven with his earthly body and not as a spirit. You you have to prove it to me from the Bible. I'm just saying the term first and the last is applied to Jesus in Revelation one seventeen and eighteen. Do you agree? Look, I'll read it. And when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. Listen to this. I am he who lives and was dead. That must be Jesus. And behold, yeah, I am alive like, forevermore. I, I agree 100%. Right, so Jesus is the that first is... and the last. Yes. Okay, but, fine. We agree and, on that. We go no, to Revel... but not, not in the context that you're putting it. I agree that he is the first and the last. But he was the first because the context of it shows definitely you're speaking there about Christ Jesus. In verse 8, you're speaking about the Almighty, His Heavenly Father, Jehovah. In Revelation 22, 13, the Alpha and the Omega is the first and the last. Listen to Revelation 22, 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Correct. And that refers to Jehovah. But the I thought Almighty. you said the first and the last was Jesus. <laughs> I will say it for the last time, Robert. The first and the last does not necessarily mean the same thing. You can have the first and the last have, have with two different meanings. Applying to, do, applying to two different people. Do you believe it applies to two different people? Yes. Because Jehovah himself has never had a beginning. He never will have an end. He is the first and the last. But you believe that when Jesus, Jesus is called the first and the last, the first, Jesus was also the first and the last, insofar as he was the first human ever to be resurrected to heavenly life, okay. and he was the he's the the last insofar as he is was the one also only been resurrected by his heavenly Father Jehovah, because Christ Jesus himself was then given the role of resurrecting the dead then then if you have different firsts and last isn't that confusing because you know not when you, not when you, it will be confusing if you say that jesus is jehovah no i didn't i i i said in isaiah 44 verse 6 let, let me turn to isaiah 44 verse 6 we read that jehovah is the first and the last Thus says Jehovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. So you're saying this applies to the Father. 
Jehovah is the first and the last. And there's no God beside Jehovah, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Right, but then you turn around and you say that Jesus is a God who's beside Jehovah. He's not the almighty God, he's the mighty God. So you believe there is actually more than one God. Jehovah is one God, but there's a number two God, a second God, who was created after Jehovah. That's Jesus Christ, the mighty God. That's correct. Right. If you go to Isaiah, 40, the previous chapter, Isaiah 43, 10, we read that there's only one God who is Jehovah. There's no God formed after him. You are my witnesses, says Jehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am Jehovah, and beside me there is no saviour. So the only God is Jehovah. There's no God formed after Jehovah, but you've just said, Dudley, that Jesus is a God. He's not the almighty God. He's a second God, the mighty God, who was created sometime. Um, he was created by Jehovah. Is that right? That is correct. But, but how can Jesus be a God who is created when Isaiah 43.10 says, there's no God formed after me? Because Jehovah has elevated him to that position, I meaning he's king of the kingdom. He is the mighty he is a mighty God. There is no questioning that. So you have two gods. You have the Almighty God and you have the mighty God. That's what Isaiah six and verse nine calls Christ Jesus, that he's the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. Isaiah nine six, I'll just read it. Six and verse nine. I know it very well from my days as a oneness Pentecostal. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So Christ is called the Mighty God. And you saying that's a created God who's created, who's created by Jehovah at a period in time. He's not eternal. He's a created being who Jehovah created, who came into existence. Correct. But Isaiah 43, 10 says that there's no God formed after Jehovah. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am Jehovah, and beside me there is no saviour. So the only God in the universe is Jehovah. He's the almighty God, yes. But you believe in a second God, a number two God, a smaller we believe, God, called, what we, what called we, the mighty what God, just, who was we, created. We do, do not worship Christ Jesus as a God, because even Jesus gave his worship to his heavenly Father. Don't you think that's rather inconsistent that you believe that there is a God created after Jehovah, by Jehovah, when Jehovah says there's no God formed after me? And well, we've only got a minute mind. and a half left, Dudley. He, he, he is the Almighty God. He is the one who created Christ Jesus. He has exalted him to a superior position, as the scripture says, above all other, all other names. Yes, the Bible describes him as the Prince of Peace and a mighty God. But there's no, but you have two gods. The Bible says there's one God. It's quite obvious that the God, the God of the Bible is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The God of the Bible is revealed as Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Christ did not have a beginning. He's not a created being. He, he's not a created God. The Son eternally shares his Father's nature, as does the Holy Spirit. There is one God who exists personally, distinctly and eternally as the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We've got we, less we than will, a minute. We will never agree on this, Robert. We will never agree on them. You haven't proven that Jesus Christ is created, but we're going to have to go. We have to finish. We've got seconds yeah. left. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Dudley. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.